Hello, and welcome to Tea and New Book Tuesdays. My name is Lisa. I'll be your host today. Today we're going to switch things up a little bit. Instead of doing books that are available on the shelf now and books that have been that are coming new but are on the um, September new book list, we're going to go even farther ahead. We're going to go into October's pre-orders. So for many of these titles, this will be the first notice you have that we're buying the book. These have not appeared on any other new book list at all. I'm also going to have a prize drawing, but first we'll make our tea and start off with today we're going to have chamomile, honey, and vanilla. It's a nice herbal tea that I've had before. And I'm going to do something that I've wanted to do for a while, which is um, publishers send librarians advanced reader copies. That's actually what all these books are back here. Um, and most of these books are already out. But they'll send them to us months before a book is out to try and convince us to buy the book. But, you know, we're thinking that maybe if we have a chance to read it, we will want to add it to the collection. And sometimes that's true. I've definitely uh, gotten books I wanted this way. Let me make sure I've got this open for you so I can see what's going on. I've got another librarian in the comments um, answering any of your questions. As always, every title that I'm going to discuss today will also be on the New Book Highlights newsletter. And so let me go ahead and add that to the comments as well. Let's go ahead and start off. Here we go. Okay, so I've got the newsletter in the comments, and we're making our tea. Today I'm going to go over October pre-orders that are Southern stories or cozy romances. And we'll change things every week. The big prize I'm planning for this week is going to be The Invention of Sound. This won't come out until next week. But if you want to win it, I could put it in your hands as early as Friday. What I need you to do if you want to win the book is tell me which of today's books are you most excited about. Put that in the comments, either here on Facebook or on YouTube. The contest will close on Friday at 9 a.m. And I will draw randomly a winner from the comments and then send you the book via curbside. So that means you do need to be in Mobile to win the book. I think my tea is almost ready, so I'm going to pull that to the side. Then we can get started. Go. We're going to start off with cozy romances that are coming out in October. Let me go ahead and pour my tea. There we go. All right. So this first book comes out on October 20th. Denise Hunter's Autumn Skies. This is the third and final novel of the Bluebell Inn series which has been a pretty popular series. Um, Denise Hunter is the best-selling author of The Convenient Groom and A December Bride. And both of those are now Hallmark movies. Let me take off my mask because it makes it a lot easier to talk. Um, in, at West, this is classified as faith fiction. The rest of the libraries, it'll just be in fiction. Um, but it'll also have a faith sticker on it. The first two books in the series were called Lake Season and Carolina Breeze. Uh, we own copies, and I think there's some on shelf. So if you wanted to read those two, this one will come out on the 20th. You could put a hold on it, and then you will have read the whole series. Uh, most of the early reviews I was able to look at came from 
Denise Hunter's fans. So you sort of have to put that in context. Uh, but they loved it, and several of them said they felt the series got better and better, and that this was their favorite of the three books. Again, that one comes out on October 20th, but it's already pre-ordered, and you can put holds on it now. Next up is another end of a trilogy, The Light of Wind Cliff by Sarah Ladd. Uh, this is set in 1820s Cornwall. It's considered a Regency romance, and it evokes captivating worlds and delicious dramas of Jane Austen, Daphne du Maur, and Winston Graham. The first two books in this series were called Oh, I'm going to have trouble with these names. Um, <laughs> the Governess of Penwith Hall, I think, and The Thief of Lonwyn Manor. And they've been released in the last year to two years. I think the first one was in 2019. We own the whole tr trilogy. This one will come out on October 13th. Uh, these are marked as Faith at West as well. All three books take, pl take place in Cornwall, and they have different protagonists, but they sort of go forward in time. And I think the protagonists are all related to each other. Um, the series begins with the first book in 1811. This one, the third book, is in 1820. The reviews said it was a bit of a mystery in addition to a romance, and it will come out again on October 13th. Now, a romance that is not part of a trilogy, or at least not so far as I know. Uh, Simmer Down by Sarah Smith. It's described as a finger-licking good rom-com. Two is the perfect number of cooks in the kitchen. The description is Nikki DeMarco would, knew life wouldn't be all sunshine and coconuts when she quit her dream, dream job to help her mom serve up mouth-watering Filipino dishes to hungry beachgoers. But she didn't expect the Maui food truck scene to be so eat or be eaten, or the competition to be so smoking hot. So another food truck owner decides to park very near them and is stealing uh, business from their little coveted beach spot. The two protagonists, the Filipino woman with the Filipino uh, food truck and the British owner of the other food truck, decide to compete in a food festival with the winner getting the coveted beach spot. There were a lot of uh, good reviews. There were a small number of reviews that were one star, so it was sort of like people loved it or they had no use for it. Um, another Smith title that's also a romance at West is avail available now. I don't think I wrote down the name of that book, but anyway, this comes out October 13th. Next up, October, September and October were a lot of, when a lot of Christmas books come out. So here's one of these. This is A Christmas at Holiday House by Rayanne Thane? Thine? Not sure. Uh, but she's the best-selling author of Seasons of Wonder. It's an uplifting brand new story told with Thine's trademark charm and heart. The perfect read for fans of Robin Carr and Debbie McComer. Yeah, their holiday romances. It's about a young widow who's uh, searching for the perfect Christmas for her little boy. She becomes enamored with a small town in Colorado because it has snow and all sorts of lovely things. Um, and sparks fly between her and her client. Uh, the re early reviews were once again from fans of this author, and they seem to really like it. This comes out October 6th. Ironically, the one about Christmas comes out the first. Um, so we lost two Southern authors this last weekend. We had two Southern authors that passed away. And we're buying more copies of the first one's book, so I wanted to let you know about that. Randall Keenan uh, was born in New York, but he was raised in North Carolina. And he often wrote about being black, gay, and poor in the South. He passed away this weekend, and we are buying more copies of his collection of stories called If I Had Two Wings. Unfortunately, Julia Reed, who was a much beloved humorist here in the South, also passed away this weekend. Uh, she was the master of writing about eating, drinking, and making merry. We have several of her books, including South Toward Home, um, and... 
Yes, and she also passed away this weekend. So now let's move on to Southern Stories. Some of these look like a lot of fun to me, especially these first two. We have Memphis May Mayhem, A Story of the Music That Changed the World by David A. Less. Um, there's I'm, Memphis gave birth to music that changed the world. Memphis Mayhem is a fascinating history of how music and culture collided to change the state of music forever. Um, this city's music ecosystem apparently includes studios, high school band instructors, clubs, record companies, family bands, pressing plants, and retail record outlets. It produced a startling array of talent. There's no point in even listing off the number of people that have been influenced by Memphis's music. But it's this book is considered lively and comprehensive, a provocative chronicle of finding common ground through music and creating a sound that could change the world. Um, there are only a handful of early reviews on this one. They tend to hover at three stars, uh, which is still good. And it will come out on October 6th. We have another music title, Jacksonville and the Roots of Southern Rock. I did not realize this, but apparently Jacksonville, Florida is, is the home of bands like Blackfoot, 38 Special, and Molly Hatchet. And the reviews for this imply that there's a connection to the Allman Brothers and Leonard Skinner as well. The, the tagline is an enduring achievement and legacy of a rock movement. Fitzgerald, the author is Michael Ray Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald reveals how the powerful local AM radio station worked with newspaper and television to nurture talent. Media attention in turn created a public hungry for live performances by area bands. What became the Southern Rock elite welded relentless determination to a furious work ethic, honing their gifts on a testing ground that brooked no weakness and took no prisoners. I have almost no early reviews of this, but it's very informational, and early reviews are usually about something that's more narrative. Um, so that doesn't mean anything good or bad. But it comes out October 6th. Now this next book, librarians have been freaking the heck out about this book, just falling over themselves to explain how good they think it is. It's also got 200 early reviews, which is a ton. That is way more than you usually get, um, even for a fiction novel. But this is Nebulous Locus and Alex Award winner P. Deja Clark returns with Ring Shout, a dark fantasy historical novella that gives a supernatural twist to the Ku Klux Klan's reign of terror. Um, in the book, W, sorry, D.W. Griffith is a sorcerer and the birth of a nation is a spell that drew upon the darkest thoughts and wishes from the heart of America. Now rising in power and prominence, the clan has a plot to unleash hell on earth. Luckily, Marisie Bordeaux has a magic sword and a head full of tails. When she's not running bootleg whiskey through Prohibition, Georgia, she's fighting monsters she calls Ku Kluxes. She's damn good at it, too. But to confront this ongoing evil, she must journey between worlds to to face nightmares, made flesh, and her own demons. Together with a foul mouth sharpshooter and a Harlem Hellfighter, Marisi sets out to save a world from the hate that could consume it. Most of the reviews are that this is fantastic, and given that it's a novella, it's not going to be terribly long either. It comes out on October 13th. Okay, so the next two are a big enough deal. I need a sip of tea. Um, that even though we haven't put them on a new book list, they already have holds on them. The first is Where I Come From, Stories from the Deep South by Rick Bragg. Uh, this, we're buying a ton of these. We'll probably buy it in other forms, although I don't think those orders have been put in yet. <clears throat> Apparently Bragg has a pulled surprise, which I did not realize. Uh, but he's, if you need to know who he is, he's the author of All Over But the Shoutin'. Uh, he also does columns for Southern Living and Garden and Gun, which 
one of the reviews pointed out that he says he will continue to write in Southern Living about Mama Mudhold's tides and Tupperware until the magazine raises its standards, which I find really funny. Um, this is a collection of essays, and for the most part, they are reprints. There should be some original ones in here, because that's usually how it works. There are only a handful of early reviews on Goodreads, and we don't have anything on NetGalley or Amazon yet, but they were all four and five stars. And again, that comes out on October 27th. The next one, I think, is also going to be highly coveted. We are we have already put in the pre-order for a dozen copies. We've also pre-ordered the audio and the large print. The Wonder Boy of Whistle Stop by Fanny Flagg comes out on October 27th. It's described as a heartwarming novel about secrets of youth rediscovered, hometown memories, and the magical moments in ordinary lives. Uh, this, Fanny Flagg is, of course, the author of Fried Green Tomatoes at the Whistle Stop Cafe, which became an award-winning film. This book is about Miss Ruthie's son, Bud, who was a baby in Fried Green Tomatoes. Uh, years after he's left Whistle Stop, and Whistle Stop has turned essentially into a ghost town, he decides to return to the town and to the cafe and see what's become of it. In doing so, he discovers new friends, new surprises about Iggy's life, and about Ninny Threadgood, Evelyn Couch, and other beloved flag characters, and also about the town itself. He also sets off on a series of events, both touching and inspiring, which change his life and the lives of his daughters and many others. Could these events all be coincidence or something else? And can you go home again? Again, it will be released October 27th. Pretty much as soon as this one is on a new book list, the halts are going to explode. So I wanted to warn you about it early. But I hope that you can be in that first group um, that gets to read it as soon as it is marked and ready to go out on the shelves. Next up, we have nonfiction, Down Along with the Devil's Bones, A Reckoning with Monuments, Memory, and the Legacy of White Supremacy by Connertown O'Neill. O'Neill is a, a white northerner who moved to Alabama. And he became fascinated with Confederate monuments. This book specifically, he decides to travel around looking at the monuments of Nathan Bedford Forrest and talking to the people in those communities that have these monuments about how they feel about them. The book is described um, this way. O'Neill's reporting and thoughtful, deeply personal analysis make it clear that white supremacy is not a regional affliction but is in fact coded into the DNA of the entire country. Down along with that devil's bones prevents, uh, presents an important and eye-opening account of how we got from a Patamux, Patamux to Charlottesville and where, if we can truly understand and transcend our past, we could be headed next. The early readers gave it uh, four and five star reviews. It comes out on October 13th, and I'm going to add one more bonus book, Culture Warlords, My Journey into the Dark Web of White Supremacy. This isn't necessarily a Southern story, um, because as Down Along the Devil's Bones pointed out, white supremacy is a larger problem than the South, far larger. Uh, but this is written by a journalist who describes herself as a mouthy Jewish broad from New York. Uh, she went sort of undercover on many internet sites and in the dark web to study anti-Semitism, racism, white supremacy. Um, it, the, early re the early reviews on NetGalley and Goodreads were all just excellent. And many of them described it as not an easy read, but an occasionally funny one. It comes out October 13th. Now again, if you want to win, check, I cannot pronounce his last name. If you've watched this, any of these, you understand. I have tried, and I'm just not sure. But if you want to win this, I need a comment somewhere in the comments of either 
the Facebook Live video or the YouTube video telling me uh, which one of these books you're the most excited about. Next week, we're going to go into October's thrillers and books about history. And I will see you then.